Bonjour, second day of Christmas vacation. Um, for those who, uh, a caveat up front, for those who have been fooled by the ugly long sleeve, this is not a metal video per se. This is a, uh, as you can read here, the uh, top 10 or 10 ish records, uh, the weirdest records I have, and that can go from a bit more noisy to a bit, yeah, to everything um, art records, really, really out there stuff. Um, this was sparked on because I'm doing a uh, ambient sound that aim does a lot of noise videos and uh, I'm delving into what I have noise wise is there that's gonna be some objects uh, some CDs CDRs so not just vinyl for once or not just tapes uh, because my noise period was um, mostly pre vinyl um, don't ask me why I just bought CDs and because they were cheaper at the time anyway what's on here this is not a too weird of a record, but the last time I played this for someone, he said, what kind of weird music is this? This is a Crypt Vapor with Erotic Maniac uh, for people who are into um, Perturbator and Ghost and all those uh, Synthwave, uh, Synthwave I think it is, guys, uh, check this out. This is a bit Synthwave-y, but more Carpenter-esque uh, horror team, stuff like that. Front and the back, and I'm looking for the uh, the second one of these guys. They did a record last year, another one. I haven't heard it. I just saw it by coincidence pop up. So on the hunt for the next crypt vapor. So yeah, um, some of these are not that weird, but are worth talking about um, because of where I got them and how I got them. Um, the first one is there are two seven inches or a few seven inches, and. Uh, 10 inches but mostly 12 of course. This is Salem with Frost and Legends 2 track 7 inch. Um, this is a band I got into first time I heard these guys was on a Rough Trade sampler. Um, I picked up at my local record shop a CD at the time. Um, and there was one track on there, I don't know which one anymore, it's been too long. But um, I tried to get into the... Tried to, that was around the time I was buying heavy, I was getting heavy into vinyl. But, um, the prices for these records are through the roof, and I don't know why per se. I don't know how limited these are. I picked this one up by by pure chance when we were in New York, and I don't know if it was 2001 or 2008. I found this at um, let's see. Other music. I left a sticker on there because I thought that one day that would be important, and it is for now because. That's sadly gone. A great record store that was. But yeah, Salem, a uh, dreamy, I think it's called witch, witchy, witch pop-ish um, sounds on there. Just a black, yes, a black 7-inch. And I love these guys. So this is actually more of a call to people. If you have any Salem you want to get rid of, um, yeah, hit me up, man. I just have this. 7 inch, but I love the sound of that record. They have two full lengths, I think, and some EP 7 inches. Then, on to the weirder stuff. This one is a picture disc 7 inch called Quasar Noise Lab. Um, this was released in. Fuck if I know. 2006. And this was released by uh, Philippe Meta, a uh, Belgian. Artist, sculpture maker, uh, in cooperation with Smack Museum, the Stedelijk uh, Museum for Actuele Kunst in Ghent, a, uh, one of the best museums in uh, our little country. And like I said, this is a picture disc. Uh, and this was made for a performance he did. He built the Art Now room into a sculptural interpretation of the 80s I would say there was some Power Ranger vibes going on and some weird objects and then uh, two guys from Millionaire I think it was Tim the singer and Dave the drummer um, did the live performance there this is limited to 250 I have 246 and when I bought this it, the other ones there was another copy stuck to it so they gave me two instead of one and one a friend of mine has one I think I just gave it to him so yeah Philippe Meta this is the music that was on that um, that they played 
on that stage that was specially built for the performance. Um, yeah, really cool shit. I think the video is still on YouTube. If I can find it, and that goes for everything in here, I'll link it and uh, put it in the description box. But this is the Quasar Noise Lab. The last time I checked, you could still you can still get this pretty cheap. I think it's it's on Discord, but I'm not sure. Okay, next one. I showed this. I don't know when. Maybe in the in the ten inch videos, but that was a while ago. I can't imagine in what else capacity. Oh, in the Sun uh, Discography video. This is the sample sessions, and this is done by a Dutch vinyl and sleeve produced at Record Industry, nobody cares, but they're good people. Harlem, the Netherlands, an edition of 200 copies, and then thanks to Julie and Bjorn at Kultig Amsterdam. Kultig is a, um, an exhibition space in Amsterdam uh, that does some uh, very interesting stuff. And this is, like I said, the sample sessions. Now, these are all blacked out, but on the back is the entire track list, which are all samples from... Um, I don't know how this came to be, I just saw an uh, a email address pop up because I'm into some, as you know, and uh, I mailed them to see if they still had it because they sold this at this exhibition and it has uh, a lot of tracks on here. There are 50, 55 tracks, but it has stuff like For the Voices Untitled, uh, War Ian Brown, War on Walkman, and that's just some of the shit I know. Um, Will Holder excerpt from Robert Ashley's Pillars. Uh, what else is on here? Yes, a coal house. There is some somewhere in here. Or Stephen, yeah, here Stephen O'Malley, Zaki Husin's concert recorded at UCLA Auditorium. So I think they asked um, artists, music, and uh, sculpt. Um, uh, just artists in general to uh, provide a favorite sample or something like that. But yeah. Big ass sample 10 inch track list. The, uh, ins the inside is just a black tin. So, yeah, nothing too weird for now. Just some good stuff. I don't have a lot of weird, weird records, so um, maybe I'll have to put the title on something else. The next thing is actually kind of a package. These are records all by the same label which you can tell by the triangle that is in the top right corner they all have these same black and white old portraits this is the the Vaughn label V-O-M I don't know if that will show up there we go this is a label curated by Nico Vasellari or Vare yeah Vasellari I think a Italian guy who um, I think it was mid 2000s or could have been later when are these released? I'm not sure, but around that yeah, second half of the 2000s, I think. He curated these uh, records. Uh, he is an artist that does sculptural work. For example, he made a, um, he took all the church bells of his hometown and melted it down into one big bell, which he then did a performance on, which was also linked back to Stephen O'Malley from Sun. They did a collab. Um, performance that was held in Paris and I was there one day late so I saw the sculpture but never saw the, uh, the actual performance. Now this is noise, hardcore, this is um, this is everything, well not really hardcore hardcore but more um, his own bands, the uh, where is it, Lago Morto is, is yeah Lago Morto is more a hardcore-ish but in the vein that uh, if you put Jesus Lizard in there or something like that. So yeah, these are... The way I got onto these is because of uh, this one. This is the Burial Hex. This is from uh, 2003 and this is actually from 2009. Um, so yeah, later half of the aughts or however you say it. Here is an example of such a bell. And these are just black records with black center labels. But I don't have everything of them. They had a um, kind of a short lifespan. I remember getting everything, almost everything, at one in one go or in one setting. So uh, I'll have to check if they are still active. But if I had to guess, no, 
I have Vaughn 3, Vaughn 6, Vaughn 7, Vaughn 1, and Vaughn 2. And I think there is a DVD floating around somewhere here in the house that is um, that is also a Vaughn release. But yeah, really in love with the, uh, this is for example Ultra Dead and Condensed Dead. Uh, this is John Wies and Spencer Ye compound, so it's more also in the noise, noise scene. I would say. Um, so yeah, that's Avon Records. And then uh, this one is kind of weird for me in the sense that it opened up a lot of ventures into other subgenres. Mm, cold coffee, and this is actually one of my favorite, all-time favorite records. This is Burial Hex with Initiations on Aurora Borealis. Yes. Um, Burial Hex, of course, is Clay Ruby. He's been uh, featured on this channel a few times, and uh, his music runs the gamut from noise to more droney pieces to ambient stuff, whatever you want to call it. This is, um, in my opinion, one of his best, or yeah, maybe the best. Will to the Chapel, the first track is, I mean, one of my favorite pieces of music ever created. A very nice screen printed fold over, just white. <laughs> There's the back. And I love it. Really, really love this thing. The records are black, black, black. And check out that Aurora Borealis record. Um, they are not active, I think, anymore, but they have some serious cool records on that label. Um, for example, this, they have Manus, Ru Manus Ruin on there, which I talked about in the female video. They have Rye Wolves on there. They have, I mean, check it out, there's a lot. But if you're into maybe some ritualistic, electronic, something in there, not not uh, sort of DJ ritualistic, but you know, ritualistic, check this one out. Uh, Initiations by Burial X. Then, something, a band that has a huge discography that I have two things of. I have 77 Boa Drum, which is how I discovered them way too late, but you gotta start somewhere. And this is Ant 10 from Boredoms. Boredoms is a Japanese freak rock noise pop, just noise band. Um, and this is the cover actually kind of interprets the music in the right way. So uh, this almost looks like Lightning Bolt's artwork. It comes with this, I bought this at a record shop in Brooklyn. Um, what was it called? Wax Eye or something like that. I think it's gone too. Excuse me. Those were all shops that were there just before the vinyl boom, I think. Um, and they kind of missed, they kind of gave up. Um, I'll switch that out. I'll put Burial Hex on for you guys. Let's see if I can find track one that I've been gushing on about. Here it is. So yeah, this will be, sorry for the um, unprofessionalism, but you know I don't do cuts. So yeah, sorry. This was uh, Crypt Vapor once again with Erotic Maniac. If you want a copy of this, <coughs> Underground Soundscape still has decent stock for European uh, viewers. So check that out. Uh, like I said, yeah, Boredoms. I'm not too familiar with their entire output because it is a lot. But 77 Ball Drum is a DVD I have here somewhere up there, I don't know. Was a project they did in 2006, I think, for the first time, and they did a spiral uh, somewhere in New York, I think it was at the Brooklyn Bridge so, somewhere, a spiral of 77 drummers all from art rock and freak rock and, and uh, whatever bands and did from the New York area and stuff like that and they all together they played a large piece uh, conducted by I from uh, Boredoms and they were, they, the four of them were in the middle and he had this huge stick that pointed to colors and stuff like that so the drummers know. Check it out, it's on YouTube, I'll link it below. I know that's on YouTube. This is one of their more straightforward records. Uh, and the sleeve is actually a 
big poster, nice and colorful. This is on a Trill Jockey, so it is. It's like the Trill Jockey does the more accessible records of freak bands like this, like uh, for example, the Body when they dropped their record on uh, Trill Jockey. It was a, it had some leanings into pop music, uh, which is a fucked up thing to say about the Body, but. It is true, so uh, this, you can compare this story to whatever happened with that body record. So yeah, that's Boredoms. Um, check them out if you're into yeah, Japanese people screaming their ass off on some freak rock. Um, a few more. Hope you like this one, otherwise, why uh, why am I doing this? But. Uh, this is Rot with Ceci n'est plus avion, il chantant pour vous, Mark number 47. Now, I have no idea when I picked this up. I know where I picked this up. This is from con Conspiracy, and this was in a. when I was heavily into um, everything Kak Kickers did from Kak, um, from Belgium, and uh, Conspiracy had a lot of that stuff. And this was, I'll show you the sticker because that's the only info on there. This was uh, in their distro. So I picked this up. This is a, yeah, this is more of a sound piece than it is music. Um, I listened through it yesterday, but there's not really much to say about it other than, um, let's see, Mark Records. This is limited to 175. This is 117 Mark tapes. Nice printed sheet there. It's a guy in a. I don't know what that is. A marijuana, marijuana plantation. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is more of a, a noisy piece that um, that some somebody did. I don't know. I, I, I don't have a lot to say about this. This is a one sided 12 inch black with white. It's just so bare on info that it was one of those records that I um, that stood out in the collection because sometimes you buy something and then um, ten years later you say, oh yeah, what the hell is this? And this is one of them. So I'm going to listen to the, this one later just to get a feel for it again. Then one, two, three, four records left. Let's do this one first. This is John Cage with Etude Austral for Piano. And then book one, Etude, one to eight. Book two, Etude, nine to sixteen. Gret Sultan Piano. John Cage is a musician, um, but a experimental musician in the way that it leans heavily into art. Um, for example, they did a track called he did a track called Silence, which he performed, and Silence is, I think, 4 minutes and 11 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just, he gets on stage, he sits at the piano, opens the, the lift, he lifts the, uh, the lid, and then sits there for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, walks off, and everybody goes. So yeah, that's uh, looking at, at uh, the limits of what music is or what non-music is. This, however, is a uh, piano piece. I don't know if it's for prepared piano or just piano. Uh, it probably says somewhere here. Prepared piano is when the top is lifted and they do all kinds of things to the snares so the sound is muffled or rearranged or whatever. This is more of a... Um, this has some... Yeah, it's not jazz, but you know how jazz can go like very dissonant and this is like a piano track uh, for stuff like for this, that kind of sound. Uh, this is on Get Back Recordings, uh, an Italian press because it has that Italian silver sticker. This is a double EP and like I said this is a study for something. Etude Austral for piano but I don't know what Austral means. There is of course a complete uh, info sheet on here. John Cage and Gret Sultan. So yeah, maybe 
John is the conductor for this one. Yeah, I think so because I only see Kret at the piano. Yep, that should be it. John Cage, uh, yeah, interesting guy, interesting artist. Uh, check it out if you're into, yeah, if you're somewhere on the crossroads of art and music. Very thick records. Um, 33 RPM, nicely stamped into the death wax there. Burial hexes. So. Starting the ritual in the back. So yeah, this is kind of out there for, for my collection. I mean, I, uh, I'm not even sure how I got this record, actually, that uh, goes for some of these. There is no info sheet on here. So yeah. I think this came out of collection when uh, when I was in, in a workshop um, around 2012 or something. Someone brought in a huge bin of records that I... Uh, Got some stuff out of. I think this was in there, but once again, I'm not sure. <coughs> then the next one, and we're going into heavy art territory with uh, this record. This is, and I have to look at it because it's all black everywhere. This is Building Transmissions, um, a Building Transmissions production in collaboration with Curious Releases and Fluck 2008. So that's almost 10 years old this record. I'll show the cover. Um, I have to see if his name is on here. Nico Dox is uh, yeah, in the same vein as John Cage. He is an artist that is uh, heavily into music or sound art. And this is a piece that is uh, made for a specific performance or a specific uh, exhibition held at the Flock. <clears throat> is a workspace for an artist in Kienk, uh which does um, period based. Um, you can go as an artist, you can go with a plan there, you can make whatever you want to do it. They provide the workshops and then you can do your performance or exhibition there. Uh, there are some family pictures on here with elephants, so I think they are from the zoo. This was limited to 500 which is crazy in my opinion, but whatever, someone paid for it. There should have, yeah, I think someone paid for this. I have 307. And this is a gift from uh, the then director of the flock, Stephen Oldbeek. I was there for a period of time helping out a artist called John Michael Oeba, who did a project, uh, Velvet Underground, oriented with something about horses. It's too long ago. 10 years. Uh, I don't even know what came of it because there was no exhibition. It was just he worked on it there, then there, then there, then there. So I never. But the performance for this, which was accordion uh, and oh, I can't remember, it, but accordions on here, John Martin's uh, mosaic. So I, I remember kind of what it was, but I was into that and I was sketching at the time because I was one of those art creeps that uh, does sketches while in public. And Stephen came to me afterwards and said, he looked at me and I was so into it that uh, he thought I would like a record. And he said, I don't know anybody who would like one of these, especially when there's 500 made. So yeah, um, a kind of a droney piece, uh, a collab, improvisation with accordion players. Oh, player. So yeah, one of those party records in the collection. I'm not sure if he does anything that uh, Nicodox probably, because he was prolific around that time, 2008, 2000, late 2000s. Then three more into the weirder and weirder territories. This is Jonathan Mason with the Tesseremony Die, written in dicks. Jonathan Mesa is a, this, this guy, I don't know who that is, maybe his tea buddy. Jonathan Mesa is a conceptual artist from Germany that um, yeah, is into shock art. He does these performances in a fighting ring, a boxing ring, with a lot of Nazi imagery and um, Zeke Heiling the crowd and whatever. But um, he's also a sculpture maker. Um, and I, yeah, I love his stuff. Um, not, not too 
not too uh, into it anymore because I um, called it quits with all that art shit. <coughs> so I don't follow, uh, I don't know what he's been up to, but I don't think it changed a lot in the last 10 years or so. So yeah, Jonathan Mason. This is a record I picked up at the Documenta in Kassel, and this record was, I think, about 40 euros. And uh, I was still in my weed smoking, art loving, rebellious face at school, so I switched out the uh, outer sleeves and got this one for 16.50. Don't tell Castle. Um, this is a record, a tea ceremony. This is just them doing a tea ceremony while I think the guy in the glasses, which looks like Eddie Hitler from Bottom, which is cool because he's into Hitler. Um, he plays guitar and Mesa just dribbles his speech all over it. A nice lemon green, lime green record with some tea in the middle. So yeah, it's kind of a uh, a weird take on a meditative meditative state. Get into the groove record from uh, from Mesa here. But I just you know at the time I wanted to get something by Mesa. We don't we didn't have a lot of catalogs and stuff like that, so I picked up. Excuse me, the only thing they had, and that was a record. They had two. One was 16.50 one was 40, so I picked 16. Then, two last ones. This is Spasm with Sonder Weg. Uh, and this is a split release, actually, between uh, this one, Spasm, and then Building Transmissions. This is, um, what's his name? The guy that does artwork. He did Isis and Pelican. And Ah, can't think of it right now. Is there a sheet? Yes, there is a sheet. Art by. This is a record from 2005. Ah, uh, Mr. Selden Hunt. Excuse me, sir. Uh, so, yeah, building transmissions. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. Is there something I need to say? Or no. So this is a split release. The um, this was also I think this was at Stuck in Leuven uh, when they did their festival. I saw some metal related image images uh, around that time, and I wasn't into metal per se at that time. Um, I was kind of a late bloomer due to the fact that I I wasn't born into this cult crib with corpse paint. Um, I was into hardcore. I, uh, I I went from listening to Frank Zappa and Metallica with my dad into hardcore when I was in the second grade and then I listened to hardcore all the way through my entire high school <coughs> career and after high school I think around 2007-2008 I started discovering metal due to bands like Wolves in the Throne Room for example or so yeah I, um, <coughs> I, had a lot, I had to do a lot of backtracking and a new line of videos that will come pretty soon is uh, is going to handle about that, especially the focus will be on Belgium started with new releases by Perverted Ceremony and work my way back to see what was going on in Belgium at the time I was listening to fucking Clouseau and stuff like that, so the uh, Tom's not been called all the time um, called, is going to go up somewhere uh, in 2018, that will be a new line of videos like this one for example. Enough spasm is a also kind of an art project. The first side of this um, of this record is these are all the lyrics for the first side. What this is is a uh, four live performances all mixed and played together at once. So you have a lot of noise going on, and it's like <clears throat> it's like if you take Venom and Bathory and some other stuff, mix them in a bowl and kick that bowl down the stairs. That's what this sounds actually. Uh, he also has a Bathory shirt. There you go. And no posers. And I'm not sure who the people behind these this thing are. He looks familiar, but I, I can't say. Um, it is on Curious Records. 282 out of 300 and this was it's actually very funny that I still have this record because I bought it at the Muka uh, because I didn't go to the Leuven show I bought it at Muka in Antwerp museum for for uh, nowadays art or whatever you want okay 
second part of this, uh, I was at Spasm. Now the only thing uh, left to say on this one, and I have one more record, so this is going to be a stupid edit just because I rambled too long. I uh, picked this up at MUCA, the museum in Antwerp. I left it outside, and by chance they, uh, they took it in, or someone brought it in, and uh, I still have it. I'm not sure, but is this Matthias? I have to check. I have to check. Then, one more record, and this is maybe the weirdest I have. It's called Isonox Double Working. Verwerkt en beschermt het natuurlijk slaap. So, double feature, uh, verwerkt. Uh, I don't even know how to translate it. Um, it protects the natural sleep. That's what, what I'll call it for today. I've been uh, <coughs> talking too long. Weird ass record. There is a sleeping guy on the cover. There is some graphics in the back, which I really like how they did those. And this is a clinical study, or a, a, poll, a business card for a clinical study from the pharmaceutical department in Brussels, the UCB. They made a freaking record, who knows? This is actually a study for pills. Isonox is a sleep drug that bases, that uh, mimics, wow, there's a picture in here. Okay, that's weird. There is a picture of a friend of mine that is maybe 10 years old, this picture? 2008, so yeah, 10 years old. Weird. Um, maybe I got it from him. So if it's true, thank you. This is a drug that mimics natural sleep patterns. But why the fuck they made a record out of it, I'm, I'm not sure. But just the look and the feel of this thing is incredible. Now, you should expect that there would be some sleepy music on here, or maybe someone lulling you to sleep with his annoying voice. But this is actually Mendelssohn. And uh, De Falla, classical pieces. De Falla is Nacht in Spanish and Garten, with three tracks on here. And then Mendelssohn is Ein Sommernachts Traum. So yeah, that's a dream, so that has something to do with it. Um, really weird choice that they put some heavy classical music onto a record that is actually promoting a drug to sleep. So yeah, it beats me. This is even weirder that that picture is in here, but if I got it from Dom, thank you. Um, that's going to be the conclusion of this one. Coming up next is a tape delay, which is kind of an unboxing. Uh, I got two orders, small orders in, and then a book kind of review, because I'm doing that too now. I'm smart. I read books. Um, then the noise video is coming up, and the Boris one, I swear to God. Um, what else is coming up? The um, I think I talked about in the first part, the... Belgian uh, metal videos are coming. I'm not sure how I'm going to call this one. Those one, um, maybe Thumbs of Poser or something like that. I'm not sure. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, I hope you like some of this stuff. Uh, check out the Burial Hex. Check out the Weird Ass Sleep Records. And I'll do my best to provide links, but don't hold your breath on some of these. Thanks for watching. Bye.